Let's talk about condenser water set points. So one of the many questions that I've had brought up several times recently is what is a good and proper condenser water set point and what happens when it's too high or too low? Uh, I have had a, a couple of calls recently that I've, I've put out videos on where I kind of discuss that set point and actually one of the more recent videos where the call was for a chiller surging and while I was there I ended up having the electrical main for the whole building trip that call the surge for that call was actually due to the condenser water temperature and the chill water set point combined so in this video let's discuss what are good set points what are things you want to stay away from and just my experience and recommendations on the topic engineering mindset is a great resource on this they have a lot of really good videos they have a ton of excellent chiller trainings and and things and just really get into some of the brass nuts on just how a lot of things work so i would highly suggest stopping by there and checking their channel out i do have some graphics in here that are from some of their content that you know you'll kind of see throughout the video so i just want to give them credit where credit is due this is a graphic of a open loop tower uh, again you can see that there's a set of sprayer pumps and rails in here uh, spraying the water in the loop over a series of fill media and that air is just passed over it one of the real critical things that makes this whole process very important is something known as tower approach Tower approach is the temperature at which the water is leaving the basin and the wet bulb temperature is of the ambient air. So when we start talking what kind of set points we should be using, we can use in terms of condenser water. And we're going to really focus in on the centrifugal side of this because that's where things get the most sensitive. Uh, the other types of equipment, self-contains and water source heat pumps have a lot of their own variables that we, we won't go crazy into depth here we'll, we'll focus this video mostly around the centrifugal side in terms of tower approach so we have to really pay attention to what our wet bulb is and we can use just just some basic psychrometrics for that one of the issues we have is our that wet bulb value is going to decide what our actual tower's ability to cool that condenser water is. And so many buildings will just set a generalized set point for condenser water. The most common I see is probably 85 degrees, which is honestly a little warmer than I care for. I personally, you know, if I'm going to set just a static set point, I would I would prefer more like 80 degrees myself. The reason many people want to run you know that warmer condenser water at 85 is because the thought process is well I don't have to work my tower fan as hard in order to maintain that cooler condenser water temperature and while in some ways that's true you you are running the tower fan less one of the things you have to factor in and keep in mind though is the actual equipment itself specifically the chiller a huge factor that really plays a huge part in this entire conversation is chiller lift. Chiller lift is actually the difference between the evaporator pressure and the condenser pressure. And the greater that lift is, the more that motor is having to work. That lift and the pressures and temperatures inside of those barrels is going to be extremely affected by the temperature of the water on both sides of the system between the chill water and the condenser water. The warmer you can make the water coming into the chiller, uh, the, the better it's going to improve the, the evaporator pressure on the evaporator side of the system. And the same thing on the condenser water side, the lower you can make that water, the better. By running an 85 degree water on the cooling tower, sure, you might be able to reduce those fan speeds from say 100% down to maybe 80%. So you reduce your amp load by, we'll say, you know, 15, 20 amps total. You end up increasing your chiller load by, you know, a solid 50, 60 amps, you know, in many cases. It just the, the net value just doesn't work out that way. You know, you, you you really have to look at the bigger picture of the system is, you know, that cooling tower's job is to serve that chiller. Whenever you start running higher temperatures, all, you're, you're increasing the load on that chiller. You're increasing the lift and its ability to cool that system properly. 
At the same time, when people try to run extremely cold, chill water temps excessively, in my opinion, you also get the same effect. And you put the two together and people constantly struggle with having systems surge all the time. That's going to be why you're running too high of condenser water and you're running too low of chill water. And so when I say low chill water, which is this is an entirely separate conversation, but you know, I'm I'm talking anything less than, you know, forty five degrees, right? Forty four is, is okay in a lot of scenarios, especially if you have a proper setup on your on your system. A lot of buildings don't. I do have a lot of buildings, they run around, you know, forty, forty two degree water and Sure, we make the systems do it, right? And we have to make modifications in how we run that system to make that happen. But inevitably, you're not getting that much more out of that system by running the water that cold legitimately. The main reason we chill that water down into those lower 40s to begin with is strictly due to dew point and trying to remove humidity from the air just like you would do from a regular split system evaporator, right? We have to maintain that colder coil to get more moisture out of the air so we're dehumidifying properly that's the whole point of it so we have to weigh the factor though is are we really removing the hum as much humidity as we need to remove or are we just excessively cooling that water down if a building has proper air exchange and, and it's moving the air through the space like it's supposed to you shouldn't really be struggling with a humid space unless you're dealing with some kind of you know specialized processing facility or something where a lot of humidity is generated there's two things we have to avoid whenever we're discussing water set points and particularly on the condenser water side and that's going to be we have to one avoid surging that's the most detrimental piece to this entire puzzle that we're talking about is not allowing the system to operate in a surge state surge is when there's too much lift on the system and the impellers cannot continue to move that refrigerant uh, and it literally it, it builds so much back pressure on the impellers that it back feeds refrigerant back through in reverse direction the the compressor which is extremely damaging to the the bearings in particular they just they do not like that and a, a compressor is only going to take so much of that before it just stops the most common way that that ends up happening is usually on the condenser water side we end up you know either something happens where we're not feeding enough water through the condenser maybe that we lose uh, gpm or uh, we end up running too high of condenser water, whether it be something going on with the towers or the fans or something happens that we end up having too high of a temperature on the condenser water. On low pressure machines, which right now is primarily just going to be your train equipment, you know, that is what is depicted here. You're going to see that the purge unit is here. The atmosphere in the system does also play a heavy role in surge a lot of times. So that is kind of a third factor, but not a part of this conversation. Now, the second thing I brought up was it being too low. And that's where, you know, there is a balance to this whole thing is as much as you can go too high on condenser water, you can go too low. What will happen when you go too low is you can end up having oil migration issues to where that oil is in the sump of the chiller will end up not returning back to the oil sump properly, whether it gets caught in the condenser, maybe some in the evaporator. It's not going to return like it's supposed to, and that's usually primarily due to you've lost too much velocity through the system, right? So we have to maintain a, a physical flow velocity throughout the system, and part of that process it allows that oil to get stirred enough to return back to the oil sump like it's supposed to on some chillers that don't use refrigerant pumps for their motor cooling you can even because of the lack of of flow and velocity through the system because the lift is literally too low that motor can start to overheat and that compressor can start to overheat now train doesn't have a big issue with this primarily because it actually uses a refrigerant pump to move the refrigerant up into the motor and it literally pumps it into the motor. So a low, lower lift is going to play less of a factor on a train centrifugal. The question comes up, okay, so what is too high of lift? What is too low? 
that's going to be purely dependent on that piece of equipment. Train, in my experience, handles a lot higher lift than many other brands, largely because of the way they design their compressors in the multiple stages. They do really, really well. But what they don't do is they don't handle very low lift very well. So a York YK series handles low lift situations extremely well, but it does not perform well in high lift scenarios like the Train can. So they have each other's opposite effects. Let's talk about actual set point values. So since train doesn't handle lower lifts as well, I try to run no less than 70 degrees of condenser water on there. But because they do a lot better at the high lift values, I have a lot more confidence running an 85 degree condenser water and not have to be too worried about very many issues. Let's say we're talking about a York YK on the other hand. Since they don't run as well on the higher lifts, I try not to allow those plants to go more than 80 degrees, which in the summertime is actually kind of difficult, but we'll get into why that is. I try not to run more than 80 degrees on those, but I can run down as low as 60 degrees on their condenser water because, again, they handle low lift very, very well. And this can get a lot of extra efficiency. Those are just kind of some rule of thumb. So I just gave you a range of temperatures that I like to see that set point between. I didn't just give one set temperature though that I wanted to stick with, right? I didn't, it wasn't just 70 or 75. And that's because I really recommend not going that direction. If a plant is set up properly and is commissioned properly, you're not going to have just a static set reading when it comes to your condenser water. It's not that you can't do it that way, don't get me wrong. That is a acceptable practice, but it's not a preferred practice. A preferred practice would be having an actual modulated condenser water set point specifically. So you can leave your trill water set point at the 45. What the automation system will end up doing whenever it comes to looking at a modulated condenser water temperature, it's going to look at the outside air temp and the relative humidity. And by using those two values, it's going to be able to calculate the wet bulb temperature. And usually most of your tower approaches are going to be about five degrees rule of thumb. Now you'll have to actually look at each individual manufacturer. I know that some towers can be as low as three degrees of approach, but you're talking about a pretty expensive and big tower. Most of your commercial spaces and set setups are not going to have that. Um, but 5 degrees is pretty standard. Some can be as high as 7. So it is important to know that whenever you go to set your plant up. As you're calibrating your plant in, usually I will have my automation system set up to where the condenser water temperature will be whatever the wet bulb T temperature is plus five degrees is the condenser water set point. In addition to that, there'll be an extra parameter to where it will not allow the set point to go below 60 degrees if it's a York and 80 degrees on that modulated set point meaning that it'll it'll limit at those two temperatures. And if it was a train, again, I would do something like a 70 degree and 85 degree for a train. That way, no matter what happens, you know, I know that I'm somewhere between the ranges I want to be and I can make that system run as efficiently as possible. From my experience, like I mentioned earlier, it is way more efficient to run the, the cooling tower fan at a higher speed and load to get more load off of the chill than it is vice versa. You can do this test for yourself. If you're not, if you don't believe what I'm saying, that's okay. You can go do this yourself. Whatever plant you're working on, say you're running an 85 degree condenser water temperature and you are in a situation where say you've got a 70 degree wet bulb at that time, go ahead and lower your condenser water temperature down to about 75 degrees and take before and after readings on your amps. Yeah, you're going to see the tower fan pull more amperage, but I have a, I have a feeling that you're going to see your chiller amperage drop considerably. Just an experiment, you know, like I said, I, I've, I do this with customers frequently when we start having this conversation, and it's a very effective method that works very well for me in my area. If it doesn't for you, that's, that's fine, right? So this is just my take and my experience on this. As you can tell, there's a lot of parameters that 
play into deciding where do we set that condenser water? Can you just use a rule of thumb and make it extremely simple and just say, okay, I'm going to run a 75 degree water? Yes. But in today's world, everybody's always pushing for efficiency, and there's a lot of, I'm not going to call it misinformation, but I would say poor understanding is a better term for it in terms of how building engineers are trained and what they're taught. And I still see a lot of old practice as well that leads to engineers and a lot of people wanting to run extremely high temperatures on the condenser water and you know, you'll see them drop really low temperatures on the chill water because of that. And then they just wonder why. Why is my plant always having trouble? Why am I constantly having these failures on my chiller? It's constantly surging, this, that, and the other, right? And inevitably, it's because there's a lack of understanding of the, of the big picture here. Like I stated earlier, this is heavily focused around a centrifugal chiller setup. And they're the most sensitive in terms of lift and things. You know, a screw compressor has a lot higher ability to maintain you know lift and it's not going to have the same issues as centrifugal will and then air cooled and things it's just those are completely different topics and 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 setups the question that i see that people really struggle with the most is specifically regards around the centrifugal series which is why this video is kind of pointed in that direction you really have to take a hard look at the whole system together as one piece more than just you know a, a static point you know there's a lot that can be done there's nothing wrong with running a static point if you do that and you set it wrong you know understand that there's going to be repercussions from your equipment that you're, you're going to be dealing with a great tool that's really going to help you long term with this is and i use this in so many different scenarios is this this app called psycho metric basically a soccer metrics chart built into an app i've used this for several years now and it's an extremely effective tool and so if say you're on a job and you're trying to calculate and you're trying to see okay is my cooling tower performing well is my condenser water doing what it can you know sure you could look at the local weather map but if you really wanted to dive in deeper or even say you did just pull up the local weather data Okay, so the, say you did that and they give you the, the outside air temp, which is going to be your dry bulb, and they give you your relative humidity for the day, say 80%. This is not a uncommon day for my area. That gives me a wet bulb temperature of about 84.5 degrees. Well, you factor that and then add the tower approach value to that. I mean, I'm talking a 90 degree temperature is the best I'm going to be able to do for this particular day. And that's the kind of issues that I, I run into in my, my specific area, right? Um, but this app is an incredible app. You know, you can come in and select different values and parameters. It's, it's, an, it's extremely effective in a lot of different ways. But when it comes to trying to determine what is your condenser water set point that you can actually use and function with, it really will help you there. So that's my thoughts. That's my suggestions on condenser water set points and temperatures and kind of the whole scope of this is what I look at this is what I'm paying attention to when I walk into a plant and I think about you know okay I want to operate within these parameters and I want to get the most out of this plant I want to get the most life out of this chiller I can get these are the things that I'm looking at this is my process and how I come to my decision on what I'm going to do to run this plant I hope this experience helps you make the decision that is right for your scenario and your situation and also agrees with what the manufacturer recommendations are for what you're dealing with. I do have a merch line that I have released and it is through a Teespring website. The link is in the description. So if you want any t-shirts or hoodies or anything of that nature, I've got some coffee mugs. I absolutely love coffee. If you've been a follower of my channel for any time now, you'll see that I'm almost always drinking some form of coffee at some point or another so all that's on that website again link is in the description if you wanted to support the channel then i have a zelly and a venmo account set up to where you know you're welcome to contribute to the channel in any way it goes a long way in helping me obtain these better resources to try to produce better content for you guys and really just do the best I can with what I have in front of me and take care of your families. You know, MTT, make that time for the for your family, for your kids, for your spouse, everybody. You know, they, they are, they've they got to take a lot of priority and importance in our lives and just all the busyness that we get into every day, day to day.